Ja. Top. Even dat beeldscherm moet even recht trekken. Yes. Top. What's up, Joel? What's up, Joey? How are you? Good, good, good. Weird times. It's super you. weird times. I can imagine for you it's been a turbulent time in the last couple of months. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically started in March. So I think half a year already right now. Yeah, half a year. Holy shit. It's crazy. Yeah. If Like, if you think in perspective, like, what the fuck happened? This, what, six months just went I by nothing. Dropped and the music industry just basically also dropped. Yeah. It's crazy to see uh, how quick it kind of went. Because to me, it felt like yesterday that we watched uh, the press conference of, of the minister uh, telling everyone goes in lockdown. It's like, what? Okay. Feels yep. like uh, yesterday, but six months. Yeah, crazy. So, um, first of all, thank you for taking the time to do this. Uh, oh. I appreciate it. And um, for those people who don't know who you are, because there's probably a lot of people uh, watching right now who think, who is this guy? Uh, <laughs> can you give us some background information? Like, who is Joel? Um, yeah, of course, of course. Um, so, I'm Joel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm been working in the music industry for about nine years right now. Started uh, nine years ago as a camera guy, actually, and as a photographer. I did cl clipping photography before that. Really? Uh, um, Even I didn't know that. Something new for you as well. Um, yeah. And I lived together in a dorm uh, with the guys from Blaster Jacks, and I started touring with them, filming their shows. Uh, in the Netherlands, they uh, basically only played lo locally then. And uh, yeah, from there on, it, it went way something fell down what was that <laughs> i have no idea no idea it's ghost i guess it's in uh, your farm <laughs> yeah uh, so from there on basically became assistant manager um started touring uh with lesser jacks uh, i think we did about 180 flights a year or something it was crazy Oof. um so the tour management for two and a half years uh, meanwhile launched another company in which i started to do the management of another couple artists like Ollie James, uh, Luca Testa. Um, and then also started the record label, Maximize Records. We did Maximize Events, uh, the Maximize Label Nights. Um, so I did the label management of Maximize Records for I think a total of three years. Um, yeah, what else did it? Yeah, I did it. We did a lot of stuff. Uh, and then also the, the full management of Blaster Jacks. And then Corona came around the corner. <laughs> yep, here we are six months later. Hmm? Here we are, six months later. Yep. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's and crazy. If you, because you've kind of, now that you tell the story, um, it's a pretty interesting path that you've that you've had. As in, you started as a photographer, and somehow you ended up being the full time manager uh, of Blaster Jacks, Ollie James. What do you think got you to the in that position? Commitment. Okay. Um, I think like looking also at my personal life, if I if I want to do something, I go all the way. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is, if that's sports, uh, something I like, uh, something I want to learn. Mm -hmm. Basically from the start, like a lot of hours, a lot of dedication uh, and a lot of commitment. And it doesn't matter like which artist that is. I think that that's in the music industry in general, it's, it's a 24 uh, seven in industry. Uh, I think that that's really important. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned the twenty four seven industry. Do, was that tiring to you? Was that something you struggled with? Uh, the touring, definitely yes. Like I was never at home, and when we were at home, as I also did, like uh, back then, the co management. I also went with all the meetings with spinning and stuff. So I remember we had days. I remember one time we had a flight from Bali, eighteen hours. Tom mm -hmm. and I, and we went straight into a meeting, um, and then I got home at night, and then the next morning. At 10 a.m. at a meeting again at Spin in Records office. Yeah. And probably one or two days later, we would fly out again. So, um, yeah, really like work uh, takes the first place in your life. Um, I think in in a lot of uh, cases in the music industry. And did you always aspire to become a manager, or is it just something no. that came on your path? Um, I really liked entertainment industry. Um, I like music. I play drums. I play piano. Um, and I listened to a lot of like dance back then, you know, Chesto, Martin Garrix, Animals. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I was always interested in it, but it's not something I've always wanted to do. I actually did start studying international media and entertainment management, so it was related, mm -hmm. um, but it's not that I can say, oh, I specifically wanted to be an artist manager. Did that, that education, did that help you in the whole profession or? No? I didn't. I did not finish it either. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, but no. Nah. Um, of course, it's a foundation for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say eighty percent you learn like by doing it. Okay. Let's yeah. say twenty percent is a foundation you can use like. But I would not necessarily say it's in the music industry, but in general. And if you now that you look back in hindsight, what would be which skill set would be part of being a manager? What's the thing you, you need to be great at to become a manager? Oof. Uh, Everything. <laughs> being stress resistant, I would definitely say. Don't let your emotions take over quickly because uh, you deal with so many stuff at the same time, artists, but also other managers, labels. You know, you, you might get a lot of negative news and I think it's really important to just, you know, keep those emotions out. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned before, dedication, commitment, um, you basically, yeah, it sounds where we're going to, at least in my opinion, as a manager, go in a relation with an artist, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they can call me in the middle of the night, whatever. And, you know, I'll, I will be there and help them wherever I can. Uh, yeah. so I think commitment, dedication, and yeah, being stress resistant are the most important. And of course. You need to be really willing to learn things change all the time and you have to know a lot of things about everything basically social media contracts communication marketing sponsor deals so that there's a lot going on at the same time yeah and there isn't really something like this handbook you can read to become a manager right yeah. a handbook. no it's like learning the hard way it's learning the hard way with a lot of ups but even more downs and then it's it's the was it the challenge for you to stay up when you go down that much? Um, we went, I went down pretty hard when I was still really young. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, like uh, as a team, we experienced, yeah, some struggles. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I learned a lot from them uh, when I was, I think, 20 or 19. Um, mm -hmm. So, of course, because I was so young, I took that in my little backpack and could only grow becoming older. Yeah, because how, how old are you now? I think you 27. didn't mention. 27, that's pretty young. It is pretty young. I started touring when I was 21 and started the management agency when I was 23. Yeah. So yeah, I was yeah young with everything, I would say, in this industry. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, it's weird because if you, I, same as you, like you talk to a lot of people from the music industry, from different professions, different angles. And what you get from most of them is that everything you learn in this industry, which is important, is not something you're going to learn from a book. No. Definitely. As an artist, as a publisher, as a label, sure, there are some guidelines and there are some terms that you might need to know. But aside from that, the other 80% is learning by doing. Yeah, learning by doing, learning from others, I think, is also really important. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in this music industry, as you said, there is no book. So that also means there is no standard. Mm -hmm. Everyone has its own way of dealing with certain stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that also keeps it interesting, of course. Uh, but therefore, I also think you, in the end, uh, take a little bit of everyone's knowledge and everyone's uh, way of dealing with stuff. And yeah, you form that in a way that yeah, you in the end deal with people and stuff. Yeah. Did you ever had a mentor or something? Like someone who um, who you could go to to ask questions if you didn't know how anything worked or... Um, not really a mentor. Like after um, uh, Blessed X decided to break up with their first manager, I stayed with them uh, and we went. I was, I was too young back then. Uh, so uh, they went to another manager. But... I basically did co-management, so I was touring back then, but I was also involved in the in the full business side. Um, so yeah, I, I I could definitely ask that person wherever needed, but mostly I learned just from seeing what happened and uh, yeah, the hard way, as I said, yeah. adapting to the situation and and reflecting on what went wrong, 
and taking your learnings with you. Yeah, I think that that's really important. And stuff like contracts, of course, <clears throat> uh, that's just doing it. Just reading a lot of contracts and getting to know the standards. Like right now, if I read a contract within five minutes, you know which things are important and which not. Within five minutes, I can just pick out, change this, 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 and that's it. And what are some of those points that you mentioned? Like, what are some some highlights that you can say? Like, okay, if there's an agreement, I always watch this, 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 and that. Uh, depends on what artist it is, of course, because I have like bigger to smaller artists. So is there a difference in agreements? Yeah, of, of the bigger your artist, of course, the more you can demand, basically. Mm -hmm. And the smaller the artist, yeah, you just want that release and don't be the guy like that's gonna annoy like the shit out of the the team because in the end that's just going to be frustrating mm -hmm. um so yeah that that really depends uh but for me the three most important things always are of course the royalty split um i would say the the term of the license like how long is it going to be 30 years or 15 years mm -hmm. um if there's an option so do you are you forced to send them new tracks as well um and uh, what's the um yeah how do you say that What's the term of not being able to release other uh, the restriction commitment? Yeah. So is it possible to release a track straight after a week, or can't you release a track? I've had I've had contracts where said you couldn't release tracks half a year around your oh. release. So yeah, as an artist, especially right now, what can yeah. you do? That, that that's that's important. It's it's impossible to not release music for half a year. It is. They want three year, uh, three months before and three months after a release commitment. So, yeah, that's that that's stuff that I think is really important. But every contract is important. I know deals, management deals. Uh, it's a famous story from a guy in France. And a lot of artists are really happy when a manager reaches out. But in 99% of the cases, a manager has more business knowledge than us. So always go check and don't be too happy. Huh? Sorry, the connection broke up. What did you say? Because in 99.9%? 99.9%, I would say a manager has more business knowledge than an artist. Yeah. So I get it. It's really nice and it's great that a manager reaches out to you, but calm down because uh, get everything checked. Like if you sign for three years, you sign for three years. And there's a story in France where a guy was happy and he signed and he signed away 85% of his income. So... Mm -hmm. Is that even legally allowed? Euros of a show, if he makes thousand euros of a show, he had to pay eight eight hundred fifty euros to his manager, and then thinking yourself booking costs and maybe other costs, he would make actually a loss on the show. Huh? So you know that 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 stuff. Uh, inform yourself about what are the standards, and you know that I think that's important. The one thing you mentioned is a manager reaching out to the artist. That's yeah. what I see happening as well. How often does that happen? How often do you do you reach out to an artist saying, "Dude, you, I need to manage you"? Um, actually, I think when I feel the artist is there, I will reach out. That's how I got all my artists, except yeah. last year. But Ollie James, literally, Asko, Luca Testa, just reach out to them. Why Asko, for example, I heard a track. I don't know where it was. I think in in a YouTube set or a SoundCloud. I just heard one track. I thought, oh, this is sick. So then I go check off that guy. I check more and then I just reach out. Yo, you have a manager? No. Okay. Can you send me some more stuff? And what is it that you're on the lookout for? Because you've heard that one track, which is kind not that much of a reference. Let's just say that's one not track. Well, of course, but um, it was something unique to me. It was something interesting, intriguing. Uh, like especially as label manager, I got so many demos, so you hear so much of the same, yeah, music over and over, and this just stood out. Um, and then when I heard more, of course, I thought his complete sound stood out. Um, and the same with Oli, like all the guys. Um, I I just first I, I don't give him a contract immediately. I always work half a year basically, um, uh, like that we stay in touch. Yeah. Uh, just to know there's a personal connection, which is really important to me, and that it's not like uh, they just made a, they had a good week in which they made some music, yeah. or someone else made their music, you know? So that's important to me, and yeah, then I will but reach. Is, is social media part of that check? Do you, do you check their channels? No, not necessarily, actually. 
Mm. Of course, these days marketing has become, I would say, quite a bit more important um, compared to like seven years ago. So I don't really necessarily check social media. I mm. do check like the overall identity and like the, the yeah, branding is not not the branding on social media, but what can you do? What's the story behind it? The story behind the artist. And I think that's pretty in, uh, important and interesting. Yeah. And could you give an example of such a story? Like, because one of the things I get a lot from artists uh, and questions on social media as well is building a brand is such a vague thing, right? Like, what the fuck is a brand? Like, what do I have to think? Do, is it just a logo? Like, if, if I create a logo, do I have a brand or what's, what's that thing? I think it's mm -hmm. a connection of everything. Uh, I think if you're at a festival and you hear a certain song, you know from what guy it is, that's part of the brand. If you see the logo, you know who his artist is, that's part of the brand. Um, I think that all, in the end, the artwork, if you see a certain artwork, oh, that's that label or that artist. You know, I think all those small things in the end add up to being a brand. Yeah. Um, and of course, how more that is in line with each other, how better the, the overall brand is, I would say. Yeah. But I think it, it's one big puzzle and, you know, it's all small pieces. And of course, music is a big piece uh, and logo is a smaller piece. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the end, it all adds up to each other being a brand like any other brand. Yeah. So so when you hear a certain track from ours, which triggers you to see like, OK, this is something different. You're going to check out more music. You're going you might check out their social pages or whatever. I first check their Spotify. OK. Mm -hmm. to hear more that's what i usually do uh, um go to spotify and then yeah instagram check some Nah, actually i go to facebook first because facebook mostly mentions if they have the management contact or not mm. um okay. so I, I mostly go to facebook page and just click on info and if it says there's a management contact you know uh, i'm out uh, like i will probably save the track in my spotify with whatever i was doing <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So the connection broke up. Like, oh, I would yeah, just say to my Spotify playlist and move on with whatever I was doing. Yeah, exactly. You keep it in the back of your mind. And um, because one of those things that I always also get a lot from people is, how can I become interesting to a manager? Because somehow people think that the manager is the answer to success. Which you know, like enough. exactly, like if you're in the starting, if they're in the start of the, of their music career, they just finished their first song, and the next question is, "I need a manager." What's your What's your look on that? I think a manager is the an answer to your business related questions, but not an answer to the success. Mm -hmm. And that question can be help to a contract, can be help or some advice on social media or demo feedback, or whatever. But it's not gonna guarantee you success. No one like I, I even at Scooter Brown, uh, if if you're an artist um, and he sends a track to Spinning or whatever label, if they say no, it's a no, yeah. and that's not because of the manager. It's it's because of in the end the as I said the brand of the artist. Yeah. Um, so uh, as I said, I think a manager, especially of course, the bigger you become as an artist. Uh, will take care more and more of your business side, mm -hmm. but not necessarily guarantee you anything as an artist. The way how I see it is two things. A manager can be helpful on the business side, so kind of the CEO of your company, some sort yeah. of. Um, and on the other hand, it's your gateway to a bigger network. Yeah, that's true. So if you're an aspiring artist, so not necessarily a big one, and you still need to work on your network, you can get through certain people because of your manager, because if you uh, know those people, you can get to those people. Yes and no, I would say, because, you know, as you said, network in this industry is really important, but I'm just not going to send everyone's track to my network because I sure, also have sense. a reputation. And if I would send whatever label or whatever person 20 tracks a week, yeah, that's not going to work. So yeah. also as a manager, you pick what's important and what's not. Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. That's how I work as well. There's there's this certain thing, as you mentioned, the reputation. You just don't want to break that down by just sending everything to everyone and saying like, hey, listen to this stuff. And you, you just know from experience that you want to filter out 
the best things and then send it out to a certain specific person which you think it might be the best fit i have artists that sometimes make like 20 tracks in a month and i'm like yo we're not gonna send this out yeah we can send out five but 20 is just not gonna work yeah exactly it's too much so no i think that that's important so uh, what what would you recommend an aspiring artist so for example at the time when you met Ollie, what would you recommend an artist of that level to do in order to become interesting for a manager? Ollie back then wasn't nobody. Yeah, he was still a giant as a person. But <laughs> uh, as an artist, he wasn't really uh, like that big yet. And he had definitely no idea about this entire world. But what did he do that triggered you? Why did you reach out to him? Was it just his music or? Um, for me... Um, and that's really for me, as I said, every manager is different. For me, the personal connection is most important. And that mostly has to do with my touring experience. Uh, when an artist becomes bigger and touring, touring is stressful, really, really stressful. And in my opinion, when you have a business relationship with your artist or your manager, that's not going to last when it's purely business. When it's pr you have a good personal relationship, in my opinion, the business side will follow. Yeah. Um, so... Oli did music and then uh, invited him over. I actually did a kennel cruise in Amsterdam with him <laughs> the first time he flew over from Amsterdam. Yeah, um, yeah and then I just felt as a person, uh, you know, we also got really, all my artists, all my artists who don't live in the Netherlands stay in my house whenever they're here. Uh, you know, we're friends. And that's really important for me. Of course, there's a split and... Also with Oli, we're really close friends, but we also have some really harsh talks sometimes because sure. that's part of it. But for me, as I said, I think if the personal connection is there and of course the artist has the music and has the, the vision, mm -hmm. then I think together you, you can build something. So what, what am I looking at? Yeah, as I said, is uh, the music, the vision and uh, also the community. The connection, oh, well, the yeah. music, the vision, and the commitment. The commitment, okay, and the story, of course. The one week, uh, you make some tracks, but like over a whole period of time. Yeah, exactly, and of course the story of the artist. So, what's what's this guy's story? Of Ali? Well, no, just any artist that oh, you're interested. Yeah, 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 that that's really important, and I have to say, uh, especially these days, the story is just gonna speak out more and more and more. Actually. Um, know a guy that has a really great great story which is actually a sad story but and it's hard to say but you know it's going to work these days mm -hmm. and I remember there was a really famous maybe you know the story as well a famous song in the Netherlands on the radio of a guy and his girlfriend uh, was killed in a car accident and he he made like a dance song about her and no one had ever heard of that guy. And suddenly he was on the radio. I have no clue. The only, the only song that pops up where you say a guy who lost his girl in a car accident and it's Eminem with Stan. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know his name. Uh, I, I remember I, I once talked with the guys of Slam FM about this, uh, about this as well because it's a really sad story. Like, of course, he, he literally lost his girlfriend in a car accident and he made mm -hmm. a dance song. And it made, like quite good rotation on the radio channels mm. but it's sad it has to have such a story to yeah. make on the radio i think as an artist storytelling is super important like showing the people who you are and bringing them your story especially showing them what you are doing to get to a certain level uh, taking them on your journey is super important these days absolutely it's more about personality than it is about the Look music, at, uh, what is it, the voice or got talent worldwide. It's not about what they do anymore. It's about their sad story, yeah. how they ended up there. It's yeah. like uh, if you go 10 years back, it was they came, performed something and moved out. And now it's like five minutes of introduction in what Background happened. stories. Yeah, what happened in their life, which is, of course, most of the cases really sad. But I think that should not be the reason to perform a certain talent, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's true. And what do you think, like, looking at the situation right now, of course, right now might be um, a bit tough because no one really knows what the fuck's going on. But 
Um, where do you think the biggest challenges are for an artist right now? Generating income. Yeah, at this moment. So because the gigs fall away. Of course, there's a couple that have some radio play, but that's that's a really small portion. Most of the guys, of course, generate most of their income through shows. And that that's just... There's two things that stuff. There's no shows right now, but what's maybe even harder, there's no indication on when shows are going to happen again. So you cannot really make a tool on like how to deal with your financial situation or what yeah. to expect because no one knows. You have no end date, yeah. And especially when you you're a little bigger artist and you you have a team and stuff. That yeah, that's tough. And yeah. fortunately, a lot of people and colleagues of mine including myself yeah are now stuck at home yeah exactly because of this and is there, is there anything else like because that's that's mainly for the um, well the artists who are already relying on the income of music so already like a bigger level of artist but what would be a challenge for an aspiring artist um, i think basically the same because for an aspiring artist of course uh, there's two things which is really good to get you out there and that's promo and maybe like video content of a, of a big artist playing your tracks or a radio show which still goes on of course but especially the playing of your song uh, can be great promo and you miss that now as well which is tough yeah um so i think for like aspiring artists the, the smaller artists uh, the biggest challenge is to find ways to promote yourself and your tracks right now yeah um because that yeah you cannot use the big guys anymore for that yeah exactly so so what's left aside from those big guys what are some other ways to uh yeah to put your music out there um it, <clears throat> first, i'll start with your own network of course um yeah you can of course always try labels but if you can make it to a label i always say just throw it out there on uh, spotify whatever there there's plenty of Twenty dollars a year, and you can upload whatever you want on Spotify. Mm -hmm. um, better put it on Spotify than just keep it on your computer. Uh, yeah. I th I think that's important, and just think of unique ways to promote the track um, and get the music uh, get the music out there. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's interesting. It's from one hand, I think this whole period is is one big shithole. Uh, but it's really interesting at the same time. But at the same time, it brings so many interesting insights into this industry because a lot of things that kind of were under the surface for a long time came up so suddenly, like everyone starts talking about it and thinking about it. Uh, and it puts a lot of artists in positions of thinking like, okay, what am I actually doing? And is there something I could do different or better? For, for example, the income part, you know, a lot most artists always relied on having one source of income, which is crazy. No, but everything was so normal, mm -hmm. like touring, we were getting the plane, play a show, getting the plane back and like maybe our friends and uh, people around us would first say, oh, that's you fly a lot. But even that became normal. Yeah. And now. Like, this is the longest I've not flown in years. Yeah. Uh, now you see, like, on a lot of things that were really normal because you live in a kind of bubble, and suddenly that bubble got popped. Yeah. You think, like, whoa, crazy, all the stuff we did. and But now it's too, no, not too late. But, <laughs> yeah, now it's just not there anymore. Yeah, exactly. I think what a lot of people... A lot of artists learn from this uh, period is reflecting, taking the time to look back and really have like an overview of what the fuck has been going on in the last it's couple of years. Because Sorry? it's such a bubble and the music industry is a fast, fast, fast industry. Everything goes quick, quick, quick. Show here, show there, meeting here, meeting there. As I said, there's no, almost no like spare time. Yeah. And true. yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. If you, because you've experienced quite some things in the last couple of years, including this. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Maybe it's time to write a book. Exactly. Write a book. <laughs> I'm going to write a book. Uh, what's the most valuable thing you've learned, which you still use? 
every day is a new day and if the day before was great you take that with you and if the day before was shit it's time for a new start and this sounds really really cliche i know it <laughs> but especially in the music industry there will be a lot of setbacks and if you're gonna sit down with every setback and think how shit it was it's gonna be a tough time um and yeah as i said think back about the great moments um try to learn as much as you can like take opportunities and maybe yeah. the opportunity might not be look great at the beginning but every every little bit is a little bit i think that kind of nails to the point where you are right now as in um kind of hitting the reset button every day and you're yep. at that point in your career right now where everything's well i can imagine it feels like somebody hit the reset button and you're kind of back to basics yeah. Uh, and something beautiful came out of that because you started with freelance music manager. Yeah, basically, um, I'm stuck at home. Um, of course, all my artists are stuck at home as well. So that means no income either. Mm -hmm. And I have a house I need to pay and also bills I need to pay. Um, applying for a job is just really hard. There's so many people out of a job right now. And of course, the experience I have personally is really related to the music industry. Mm -hmm. So... Basically, after I think I'm at 70 or 80, 100, 70 or 100 applications right now, and everything I get back is like, no, because we have had so many applications and they're still all with more relevant experience. I heard on the radio, the average application right now gets between 500 and 750 uh, people. Whoa. So it, it's just tough. So I literally made a list for myself. What do I know? What can I do to make money? Yeah. So I'm a boxer, so I thought, okay, I can start giving boxing training. And um, I know I have a lot of management experience, but my yeah, my artists are stuck at home not having income. So how is there a way I could still generate that? And I thought there's a lot of people out there with questions, uh, smaller to bigger artists, it doesn't matter. And if they don't have a manager, um, it's tough. So I thought freelance no attachments whatsoever oh sorry uh, the connection broke up after it's tough it's tough uh, so um i thought uh, a lot of people have questions smaller artists bigger artists uh, so many questions maybe contract social media whatever and there's not really anyone to go to if you don't have a manager so i thought why not have like a freelance management where people can just skype with me uh, they decide if it's 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour, a month, mm -hmm. and they can just ask me anything. I've been on all different fields, uh, so they can ask me NR feedback to like uh, legal stuff. Like if you get a contract these days and they go to a lawyer, that might cost you 200, 250 euros uh, for a single deal. And I just, as I mentioned before, in 10 minutes, I can tell you, yo, it's better to change this, this, and this and help you yeah. get along. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I started, freelance artist management. So um, help people with whatever questions they have and they can just Skype me, uh, they can leave uh, any moment. So they can sign up for one month uh, and they can leave the next month. But if they a month after have questions again, they just sign up again. Yeah. Um, you can uh, decide when to Skype. Yeah. And um, yeah, ask me any direction. It's a beautiful thing that came out of this whole period, I can imagine, for That's you. All. because It's going to become beautiful, we don't know that yet. Yeah, sure, but still, I think um, I think it's something that's valuable and something that a lot of artists could use at these times. Um, I feel so as well, there's no like obligation, so you pay like a one-time small fee and my, my price are really not high. Um, so if you have a small question, it will cost you like 20 euros and you have 15 minutes in which you can ask me whatever you want. Yeah, um, exactly. No attachment. So if you make a world hit afterwards, you keep all the money yourself and you don't have to pay your manager 80% yeah. or any other percentage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's great to hear, man. So freelance music manager, right? Yeah, artist manager, music manager. Yeah. Cool. Info that's at freelancemusicmanagement.com. There you go. Is that um, was that even a thing before? Like freelance music manager? No, I right? checked. I did some research. There's no one doing that right now. All yeah, managers right now work with contracts based, mostly three years at least. That's normal. Yeah, three to five. So do I. Uh, but I think in these <clears> times, 
it, it, it's hard for artists as well. So, uh, and I think an artist can do a lot more than they think themselves. Yeah. So they just point out, this is stuff I really want to know. They make a list. They think, oh, how long is that going to take me? Half an hour, you book half an hour Skype with me. You ask me to come and you can move on again. Yeah. And you, if you don't want to, you don't have to ever talk to me again anymore. Yeah. Easy as that. Easy as that. Makes sense. Well, I hope I hope that uh, I hope it will launch and it will be successful. Wow, well, it would be great to still combine my passion and my knowledge with like a way yeah. for me to pay the bills. Yeah, exactly, because that needs to happen too, right? <laughs> it needs to happen. So, uh, like, also for me, uh, right now, I'm looking for jobs completely out of this industry because there is just no work in this industry. So but seriously, like 500 applications per job. What the fuck? I actually have a friend who works in logistics. Yeah. Uh, he is a manager of a big logistics company and they had an application out there for uh, just a driver for packages. Mm -hmm. One week he got 2,500 applications, not kidding, for people that just want to drive. But it's crazy. If you're really going to think, everyone that worked in security before, of clubs and stuff, that's a lot of people. Or taxi drivers. Like there, there's so many groups next to the music industry who got hit as well. People that work behind the bar and clubs, especially in the Netherlands, we have such a big entertainment industry, which yeah. hits so hard. And I think that's the whole reason why, you know, I've, I've been talking about this lately a lot with friends and, and, and what, yeah, any other kind of people. But um, I personally think that this whole Corona crisis thing, we haven't seen the beginning of it yet. You know, like we, we think we've we've overcome it in some kind of way. But the real disaster, so the financial, the financial backlash that will go, that will get here someday, these to me are the first signs. You know, it's not normal that twenty five hundred people applicant apply for a job, for one job. That means that that they're so, um, yeah. Well, what's the right word in English? Like that they're so um, in need of a job. Yeah. That like it's that, crazy. It's crazy, right? I, so I learned myself like uh, waste my time in a car. So I always put on either podcast or business radio. Yeah. Uh, and last week on the business radio, they said they expected it to take five years before the, the job market is like level out again. And a lot of people don't have five years. I don't have five years. Then me and my parents. So it's just now, and of course, only going to be more and more at the end of the year. We only have a year out there, and festivals, clubs, everything is still closed. Uh, airports. Yeah. There, there's so much stuff you don't think about that that's also being hit. Yeah. Exactly. And it, yeah, and there's as I said before, the hardest thing I think about this is there's no indication on when this is going to be over. I think even in the Netherlands tonight they're gonna announce that nightclubs and festivals still will be, uh, yeah, not possible for the upcoming months. Completely and expected, of course. Their own opinion about it, and you know, some people agree, some people really don't agree. Yeah. And everyone, you know, can stick to their own opinion, but in the end, what's gonna happen is that we're stuck here at home. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Weird times. I don't want to. I don't want to end this conversation with a downer, but somehow. Uh, <laughs> oh, see, that's something positive. Like, I I thought of myself, what can I do? And this uh, freelance artist management came out. Exactly, like reinvent yourself, right? Yeah, and I just really like helping people. Sounds maybe a bit weird, but it would be great for me if people like after maybe half an hour or a fifteen minute Skype session have a lot better insight of. Yeah what goes on in their career, what direction can they go in their career. It's really my passion to together build on a career of someone. Yeah. Like my, my artists that are uh, have a contract with me, but also the guys that would Skype me. Like it's, you know, together you build on something and that's just something really beautiful. True. I truly hope that it will be successful to you, man. I wish you uh, best. And, thanks. Uh, um, thanks again for taking the time to do this. Thanks for inviting. And uh, we'll stay in touch. We sure do. Cool, man. Ciao.